Hello everybody, James with Love My Pups and uh, My Breeder Supply. So, Q&A session for the last uh, 10 days. Right, so first one, uh, somebody's got a dog, they didn't get any AKC paperwork. They ask what can they do? Well, you've got to go back to the breeder and get an AKC um, registration paperwork. You can't do it any other way. There's no, you can't just go to the AKC and get this done. The breeder, or the person who sold you the dog, has to give you AKC registration. Without that, you just don't get it. If you're buying a dog from overseas, then you've got to get what's called an export pedigree to be able to then register that dog with the AKC. So you can do it in that situation, but again, you've got to have the appropriate paperwork from the person who sold you the dog. Without that, it's not happening. Um, somebody's asking about Trindle and Tan Points. They bought a dog that is a Trindle, and, and they want to know about Tan Points. Well, a Trindle, I, I hate this tri, you know, people say I've got a tri-color dog. It's like, it's unclear as to what the tri might mean. They're talking obviously about three things. Are they talking about cream, chocolate, and blue? Are they talking about blue, chocolate, and tan points? Who knows? But when you say trindle, that has the word brindle in it. And a brindle dog can have tan points, but it will not show them worth a diddly. So a brindle dog would be a dog, but a, a tan point dog is either A T. A or is AT AT? They both show 10 points. A brindle dog would be KB KN, one copy, could have two copies. And in both those cases, these dogs are quite capable of having, ten, they have 10 points. This is 10 points, but this brindle right here wipes out the 10 points where you don't see them or where they're muddled up and you don't see them very well. So. Anytime you're trying to produce tan points, you need to avoid brindle. You don't want brindle. And I get people who are always complaining to me, it's like, why don't you like brindle? I like brindle dogs fine. It's just that if you're trying to do some things like tan points, be aware of the fact that brindle mucks it up. And so that's why I typically don't muck around with brindle dogs myself very much, because brindle is a dominant gene. It only takes a single copy and it does mess up things like tan points. So a trindle, means it's a brindle with three with some other qualities and it won't show those 10 points. Um, I bred my dog, everything seemed to go okay, then after two weeks she still got a bloody discharge. Is that normal? Yes, it is. So the, the heat of a dog typically starts, you know, we, we say this is day one right here for the heat. Most dogs get bred about day 11 through 13. Most dogs have a fairly red discharge for this first nine days, and that's till about day nine, which is ovulation. So normally a dog will start to lighten up in color around ovulation and go to more of a pinky vanilla color, and it will not then show much discharge for the rest of the time. But that's not always the case. Some dogs, it continues on till day 21, where you've got this bloody discharge. So that is not something that necessarily is a problem. Now. There can be other reasons for this bloody discharge. Specifically, um, you could have introduced, remember when you AI a dog, its cervix gets opened up a little bit so that you can get the semen in there. And you can introduce a bacteria or something else that's causing a problem in the uterus. So, what you do here is check the temperature. Check the dog's temperature. The temperature needs to be less than 101.6. Fahrenheit. If it's 101.6 or higher, it's time for a trip to, trip to the vet. Because you could quite likely have um, a uterine, in, uterine or, or a, a, um, a uterine infection, uh, and which would require antibiotics if it gets out of control. So you can get a thing called pyometria, which is where you basically get pus inside the uterus, and that's a bad situation. So that number one probably voids the pregnancy, and number two, you could really get the dog in trouble where it has to you know, be spayed. So if you've got a bloody discharge and you're many, many days after the AI, check the dog's temperature. A temperature above 101.6 in any dog at any time is cause for concern and definitely requires a professional, i.e. a vet, to diagnose and see whether there's a problem. Uh, so uh, my dog is pregnant, I think my dog is pregnant, it's 45 days old, shall I be able to feel the puppies moving? Well, 
This, is, this depends on the dog, depends on the number of puppies, maybe. Um, you should get some visual signs probably because you've got another 15 days to go, two weeks until um, birth. If a dog is really pregnant, it's pretty obvious and you may actually see bumps moving around. You may be able to palpitate the puppies at that age. If you've only got a single puppy up in there, they tend to be held up in the ribs and you may not even be able to tell it. So the answer to that one is maybe. Oh, here's an interesting one. Um, so somebody had a puppy born and its back legs were turned out a lot. So rather than the legs being, get rid of this piece of paper so I can show you what we're going to do here. So this is an interesting one because I've run into this one. Not very, very often, but I've always been able to fix it. So you've got a puppy with its back legs would normally be, so the bend of the legs would be you know, in parallel and in line with each other. This is the front of the dog, the back and the back legs. So the back legs look like this. But instead of looking like this, the back legs are turned out where the paws come out like this, maybe even backwards even. And it's like, what am I gonna do about this? The answer is, is you put some tape on the legs, so you pull the knees in like this. You pull the legs in. And how you do that is, is you wrap some electrical tape on this leg, so it pulls that around, and then you wrap the tape, you twist this leg around and put the regular. Right so what you've done is, is that you've brought the legs in like this. And if you do that right at birth, typically within a week, it'll all get sorted out. It's incredible how malleable little puppies are. If you leave it alone, you may have a dog that can only walk backwards. I mean, I've never had, never been able to not fix this by simply taking some tape. And, uh, and this is the same thing you'll see a video of mine on swimmer puppies where we've got these dogs where their legs are sticking out like this and they're, they're on their belly all the time, they're never getting up. Typically the fat puppies do this. What you do the same thing again is you take their knees together and it hobbles them so they have to get up on their feet. But this is a bit different. This one you're actually physically tying the tape up on the legs so you roll each of the legs inwards so the, so the legs are now facing forwards. You may not get them forward the first time but the next day you'll get a little bit better and the day after you'll get a bit better. If you just keep working at it, you can literally bring those legs around and the puppy will be fine. So there you go. When I've got a puppy next time, I don't have any puppies at the moment, I'll actually take a puppy out and show you how that actually works. I bred my dog, it all went well, but I, I, some of the semen leaked out afterwards. Yes, this is a problem. So the secret to this is, is that when you AI a dog, you've got to keep that dog's butt end elevated. And I prefer to put a finger in there and block anything from coming out for at least 20 minutes and leave that dog elevated for at least a total of 30 minutes before you let the dog back down. And when you let the dog back down, put your hand underneath her belly, underneath the back end. So if you feel anything dripping there, you can immediately bring her back up like this and let gravity do its work. If you do that, you will minimize or completely stop any leakage. Remember, any semen that's coming out is not doing what it's supposed to do, get the dog pregnant. So people will say, does it matter? You bet it matters. You wanna get us, excuse me, as much of that stuff to stay in there as you possibly can. And the secret is to keep the dog elevated for at least 30 minutes. Some dogs, it takes a whole hour. Uh, someone's asking about doing a spay during their C-section. They're thinking about spaying their dog at C-section. And then specifically they ask, will it affect milk production? It'll do a lot more than that. It puts a lot of pressure on a dog. I highly recommend you do not do that. So some of these vets uh, don't think that what we're doing is correct and they don't like the idea that we're breeding dogs. And so their solution to this is to spay the dog. And so there's lots, and I say lots, there are some vets out there who will recommend that they spay the dog during the C-section, at the end of the operation. Absolutely do not do this at all. I mean, maybe there are circumstances where things have gone badly wrong and the dog obviously, you know, the whole litter's has died, um, they've got her opened up and she's not gonna have any more puppies and for whatever reason the dog needs to be spayed, then maybe there's an argument to do it right there and then. But if she's gonna have puppies that she's gonna look after, to spay her at the same time is doing her a disservice. It puts a lot of pressure on the dog. She will feel like crap. She may not want to nurse the litter. It may destroy the ability for her milk to come in. You could even lose the dog over it. Do not spay the dog while it's having a C-section, unless there are some underlying facts that make absolute reasons why you should do this. Otherwise, I highly recommend you do not do this. Um, my dog was bred by two different males. So what she's asking here is, can a, can a female have a litter 
that is from two separate dogs. You bet they can. Um, not an uncommon thing to happen at all. So the, the scenario for this is an accidental pregnancy between two dogs. One dog hooked up, you thought you were finished, that was a dog that you wanted to have puppies from. You now let the dog loose outside the next day or the day after. You look out the window and you see it hooked up with another dog. Who are the puppies coming from? Well, the answer is it could be both of them. How do you find out? You have to do a DNA parentage. I've got a whole video on that. So you can sometimes tell who the puppies belong to based on the color of the puppies. So also, of course, if they're two different breeds, you know, one's a Chihuahua and the other one's uh, a Neapolitan Mastiff. You're probably going to have probably gonna have an idea in that situation where the puppies came from. I'm sorry, I'm just being silly here. But seriously though, so what do you do if you've got in this situation where you know, the, you, you've got a, um, a, a potential pregnancy that you didn't want from one dog and you wanted it from the other one? Well, the answer is go get, and I'm serious, I'm not laughing now, get yourself a turkey baster or even easier, go get yourself a, you know, go get yourself like a, you know, a fleet enema or, or a mass and gill a vaginal douche for, for, for humans and go ahead and flush that dog out right there as quick as you possibly can. Anything that's in there, if you can flush it out, guess what? It may not get the dog pregnant. So if you look outside and you see your dog is hooked up with the wrong dog, go get yourself a douche immediately and douche that dog and see if you can't flush it out and see if you get lucky. Likewise, if the dog was bred yesterday and now you turn around and see today that the dog is hooked up to the wrong dog, do the same thing. You have a, if, you, if it's back to back, bred to one dog, an hour later bred to another dog, and you do this douche technique, you might flush everything out and you may not get a pregnancy. So be careful on that. Um, what the heck have I written down here? Oh, somebody wants to know if they can remove the dog dew claws at nine days old. And then you're getting a bit late there. I recommend that you do this sometime between day three and day five. When you get to day nine, things are starting to harden up and you might cause some pain and discomfort to the puppy. When you do this at like three days old, you'd be surprised about how, you know, people complain about me talking about this. They don't think it should be done. But I can tell you, I've done it tons of times and I've never had a problem with it. I've never had a puppy do anything more than a quick, short squeak while you just remove the dew claw, if even that. Um, but if you start waiting too long, no, you can't do it. So is nine days too long? Probably. Is seven days too, too long? Probably okay, but here's the deal. If you're in doubt about this, remove the claw on one paw only and wait an hour and make sure it's all settled out and you haven't caused any problem before you start just willy-nilly removing claws on an entire litter. Uh, medicine for a pregnant dog. Can I worm my dog? She's pregnant. Um, so I recommend that you hold back all medications from dogs that are pregnant, especially vaccines. Do not vaccinate a dog that is going to be bred in the next few days or is pregnant. Wait on the vaccination. Skip it for this time. Uh, now, things like worming medications and heartworms. You know, most of these medications are probably safe and it's probably okay. But my general advice is, is don't add anything extra just in case. Now, if you've got a dog that's obviously full of worms, worm it. And I would use a product like uh, Safeguard, Fender Bendazole, very safe product. Um, so go ahead and worm if you know that you have a problem. But if it's just a routine worming, skip it if it's pregnant. Try not to make this go too long. Um, golly, I haven't even started. Oh, AI rod length. What length of rod length do you recommend for an AI rod? For Frenchies, 8 inches. For a dog that's 30 pounds or less, 8 inches. For a bigger dog, a 50 pound dog, a Labrador, 12 inches. Um, uh, my dog is DDBB. Is that Lilac or Isabella? Okay, so we've got this whole debate going on here and it gets confusing. So this is a dog that is DD, which is the dilution gene, which we call blue. Good. And this dog came back, and the information is sent is BB, which would be chocolate. So those two things together make a lilac dog. Sure, that's a lilac dog. The question gets to B is what do we mean by BB? Because there's two different forms of chocolate. There is what was a previously called untestable, that now is the little O, little O cocoa gene that you can test for with VetGen. It'll have red eye glow, and that's a chocolate dog. 
Um, and if you do a standard test, it will come back BB. Untestable chocolate. Versus this one here, if it comes back from a normal test as BB, that then is the other version, it's the testable version, testable chocolate. And they are different things. So Isabella is a testable version of chocolate. Most dogs, I would say, 90, only maybe 10% or less of dogs are testable chocolate. Majority of dogs, 90% or more, that are chocolate are what are previously called untestable chocolate. So you have to be careful about what you're talking about, and you've got to get clarification from the person who's providing the DNA information to decide exactly what you've got in your hands. This is a much rarer situation of testable chocolate. And it's, by the way, and the testable chocolate, when you have a dog that is testable chocolate, it's more of a milky color, it's more of a milk chocolate color. This one here can be, well, there's a whole variation in colors, all the way from a fawn chocolate to a really dark chocolate. But this tends to be a much, a much milkier chocolate. And you can see this in a lilac. And Isabella, testable chocolate lilac, tends to be much more of a faded out color, not as, much more faded out. Let's go to one set of uh, Okay, my dog had a C-section one week ago and she's panting like crazy. Should I be worried? Okay, so, a couple of reasons why dogs pant. Of course, one reason is, is they're just freaking hot. I mean, how hot's the dog? So that's one reason. If you're using a heat lamp, if you've got a heat pad underneath, you can cook mamas and they, or in a fur coat, and they've got all this milk production going on, and they're panting all the time. And all I recommend is go check out my heated whelping system that doesn't put heat under the mama and doesn't use a heat lamp. I hate those things. The other reason is, is that some mums can pant because they're nervous. Uh, so what's the environment? Do they feel safe? And the other one is, is that um, milk production is going on, and it can typically take 24 hours, 48 hours, so the dog can be in this panting mode, and it's something to do with milk production starting up. So it might be that. But if you have any concerns about this, the first thing you do is take the dog's temperature. A dog's temperature, and I keep on harping about this, the dog's temperature needs to be less than that. It needs to be less than that. If it's 101.6 or higher, something's going on. And there's all kinds of things that could be going on with a dog that's just been through an operation. Just like human beings, when you're cut open, you know, you're susceptible to getting a, um, a bacteria inside you. And so the dog could be pantanning because it is hot, because it has a temperature. That's why you should always check that. Uh... Oh, okay, so here's one I said, uh, I think I missed her heat. All right, so you got a dog, you were trying to breed it, or you were waiting to go, and you think you might have missed its heat. There's a really easy way to find out if that's true. And it's simply do a progesterone test. So test the progesterone and find out what the level is. Because the answer is, if the level is greater than 20, 18, 20 plus, you know, those kind of numbers, you know, it's in the 30s, whatever, you absolutely have missed the heat. So what happens with a dog? It's kind of interesting, and people are confused about this. So this is progesterone level on the left-hand side, and we'll, put, we'll call that 30 that there, and we'll call that zero. So a dog that's in heat, there's a slow rise, and then after about oh, 11 days, the level will be about 50, and that's where we breathe. And then it just keeps on going up, and it stays like this for the next 60 odd days. For a couple of months, this progesterone level stays high, regardless whether the dog's been bred or not. All dogs that have gone into heat, unless they're having a split heat, which is where heat, where the thing starts up and then start, stops and starts up again. But for a normal dog, if you go do a progesterone test and its progesterone level is above a 20, you have missed the opportunity to breed that dog and it's going to stay that way for another couple of months, regardless of whether you bred the dog or not. So if you think you wanted to breed a dog and you think maybe that this dog, you've missed it, do a progesterone test. Because a progesterone test above 20 means you've missed it. Progesterone test of like one or a half or even lower than that means the dog's, well, what is it right here? So right here, day zero, the progesterone level is like a 0.2 or something. It's very low. And it stays that way for the entire next four months. So here's the cycle for an entire dog. There's a six month cycle on most dogs. It's six months between heats. 
And so the heat starts, the, the, the no heat starts off with a level that's around a 0 0.2 or a 0 0.1, stays that way for four months, all of a sudden it starts to rise, stays high for a period of about two months, drop back down again, and then the whole thing starts again. So if you think you've missed your heat, do a progesterone test because if the progesterone level is greater than about a 20, you have missed it and you're going to have to wait till the next time. If the progesterone level is low, like less than one, then she's not coming to heat yet. If the progesterone level is something between one and 15, the dog's ready to be bred fairly soon, within the next 10 days. Uh, somebody's asked about extenders. So where do you get the extender? The extender that I use, I really swear by this stuff, is called Canny Plus ST. And it comes from Minitube. Minitube USA. Their website sucks as far as ordering it. You can buy it from me. If you go to my website, which is www.mybreeder, I would have a sign up here, but I'm an idiot, supply.com, we have all the things you need for breeding dogs, including AI rods, AI kits, shipping containers, Extender, you can buy all of that stuff directly from me if you're having a hard time getting it from Minitube USA. Swear by that stuff. So two months, two year shelf life, stores in the fridge, super easy to use, the best extender I've ever had by far. Um, da -da -da -da. Oh, Fluffies, people have been asked since I put that video up with that Fluffy that I got a couple, of, I've got four Fluffies now. Interesting thing about fluffies, they don't shed. At least all the ones I have don't. You know how you typically you play around with a French shoe, you're sitting on TV, you've got a black shirt on, you look down, you've got hairs all over you. Fluffies have got this long hair, they don't shed, so cool. Um, okay, one last one here. Somebody's asking what they're gonna get if they breed these two dogs together, so we'll just put this up. They have a DD, which is one copy of blue, or blue carrier, and it's BB, which in this case is not, it doesn't have any testable chocolate. It is C-O-C-O, -C -O, little C-O-C-O. -C -O. So that is untestable chocolate. It is E-E, -E, one copy of cream. It is A-T-A, -A, got 10 points. And it's K-Y-K-Y, -K -Y, no brindle. Nice dog. Right, so we're going to breed that dog to a blue dog, D-D that has one copy of test or chocolate and one copy of untestable chocolate. And it's EE cream. And they don't tell us about, oh yeah, they do, ATA, yes. And it's KYKY. -K -Y. Okay, so what do you get if you breed those two dogs together? It's the last one, so I'm gonna chunk all that. Okay, so. We're going to break this up into places. The first thing is, we know that we are going to get no brindle dogs. That's a guarantee, no brindles. We know that. Now, we don't have the information on the pied gene, so we're not going to say anything about pied. So I'm suspecting that these are not pied or pied carriers, so we're just assuming we're not going to get any pies out of this. Okay, so let's look at this here. The, this is the tan point. This is tan points right here. Tan points. So what can we get here? So the answer to this is, we could get some ATAT -AT dogs, 10 points. We could get some ATAs, 10 points. Uh, and, we should, and we could get some AAs, black recessive. That makes for a solid coat color, 10 points, 10 points. So out of this, actually uh, we would get half the dogs are gonna be that, a quarter of the dogs are gonna be that, and a quarter of the dogs are gonna be that. So the answer is three quarters of the dogs are gonna show 10 points, one quarter of the dogs, um, will not, there'll be double A recessive, totally consistent coat color. Now let's, so that's that one there. Let's look at the cream situation. So this is cream. So we've got a cream carrier bred to a cream. So we get two things. We get EE -E cream carriers and EE -E creams. Half of them will be cream carriers and half of them will be cream. The cream dogs will show no other color. They won't show blues, chocolates, tan points. They will be cream dogs. So half of these dogs in this litter, on average, are gonna be absolutely cream. Although they may have other colors present you can't see, they will be cream dogs. Okay, let's look at the blue, the blue. 
we lose these here. The blue. So what are we going to get? We're going to get DDs, blue carriers, and DDs, blue. So we're going to get half of that and half of that. So half of these dogs are going to be blue. Okay, now this is interesting because these are two separate genes. You don't get chocolate from mixing a, a te an untestable with a testable. They have to be treated separately. So let's look over at this side over here. So this one here, we are going to get BBs don't have chocolate and BBs have one copy of chocolate. So we do not get any dogs from this, and incidentally, half of them are going to be that, and half of them are that. So we don't get any chocolate dogs because of that. We will get dogs that carry testable chocolate, but they won't show it. All right. Then this one here, this is two copies of untestable, one copy of untestable. So here we get dogs that are carry. Test untestable chocolate and dogs that are chocolate. So we get a half of this and a half of this. So now you've got to analyze all this together. What are we going to get? Well, the answer is, is that we're going to get half the dogs are going to be cream, of which overall half the dogs are going to be blue, and half of them will have chocolate as well. So basically, we can expect to get this one gets to be difficult here to put this all down as to what all the variations are. But the answer is, is that I would expect to get in this litter a litter of half creams, of which some of them are platinums, of which some of them are creams coloured in blue. I would expect to get um, a quarter lilacs and a quarter blues, of which three quarters of them had tan points and one quarter of them didn't. So there's a very big mix of dogs. And just, I want to show you all the possibilities. You're going to get a smorgasbord of different colors. Be a really nice litter. All right, so hey, you spent way too much time watching me and my videos. Really appreciate you doing that. If you like what we do, let us know. Subscribe to us would be nice. Um, I get some comments where people say some hateful things. That's fine. If you want to say those things, keep on doing it. But if you have some constructive criticism, we absolutely do pay attention to that. And if you've got some things that you think we should cover that we haven't, we may have done it in some other videos, but drop us a line and we'll gladly cover that in another video. And uh, everybody be safe, and the most important thing is, be nice to your doggies. Bye everybody.